and we're live. Hi everyone. Hi. Welcome Hi. to Spill the Copy with Cuddly Boss Lady, which is me. Um, this week we have two wonderful ladies who are going to talk to us about uh, artistic swimming, also previously known as synchronized swimming. Um, Felina and Shona, welcome both of you. Hi. Okay, let, let's start off, uh, trying to find a better view. Um, let's start off, maybe if you could both tell us uh, a little bit about yourselves, uh, your background and um, why artistic swimming. Um, maybe we'll start with uh, Felina first. Yeah, sure. Um, artistic swimming started in Malaysia because we had Commonwealth Games in 1998. So the first few teachers that came over, we were partnering with uh, Synchro Canada. So the first group that came over was in 1994 and they came again in 1996. So basically they were training coaches, swimmers, technical officials and whatever it is, because even if we have coaches and swimmers without technical officials, we cannot have the competition. So that's how I got roped in. Um, started in 1996, um, then we had Commonwealth Games, and then later, um, 2001, I think we went for our second, um, 99 was our first sea games and 2001 we had sea games in malaysia so that's how um at that time synchronized swimming basically took root in malaysia and how it became um popular then okay what about you Charlie? i started off by joining competitive swimming actually and then the synchronized swimming coach, state team coach, Yen Lei, she asked me to join the team. So I joined synchronized swimming when I was 13. And yeah, so since then, I love synchronized swimming. And then started coaching eight years ago, full time after I graduated from uni. Uh, which yeah. uni did you? I went to Upper Iowa University but under Sagi. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good, good. Okay, so let's start off obviously with the most basic question. I mean, what is artistic swimming? For someone who, you know, hasn't really um, seen it, um, I mean, usually someone would have seen something like on TV or as part of, of the Olympics. Um, but could you tell us a little bit I mean, what is artistic swimming? Um, Belina or Shona, doesn't matter which one. Um, if you are a lay person, right? Um, when, when I actually first started synchronized swimming, it's basically like swimming with music in the water. That's as simple as I can put it. But actually, it is really not. <laughs> um, it's... Um, a lot of basic um, uh, figures and um, strokes that are put together to make a routine or a choreography with music in water. So that's basically from a layman's perspective. I mean, Shona will tell you about the coach's perspective or what synchronized swimming is all about. Yeah, it's more than that. It's flexibility, stamina, fitness, lots of swimming. Yeah, and body coordination. Definitely it more than a lot of core, right? I mean, in order yeah. to, to to be able to you know, basically lift and hold yourself in yeah. various positions in the water, it's, it's not exactly easy. Uh, Actually, it's, it's the skill. It's the skill of the spelling of the feet to make yourself. I mean, almost like suspend in the water with your legs out or with your body up, you see. And and that basically is thought, as soon as the kid comes in, the child comes in, the first thing they thought is how to scull 
to thread underwater. I mean, if you could imagine um, a water polo guy doing that, you know, throughout his whole uh, water polo game, but we are doing it also upside down. So, yeah, that's yeah. basically it, yeah. I mean, what, I mean, a lot of uh, our synchronized swimmers will come originally from some form of a swimming background um, because obviously you need to be familiar with the water you need to be able to swim to, to, to some uh, skill of some skill and um, would they re be required to have more of some gymnastics training some dance training would that be incorporated into um, what they would need as part of their training not necessary like for beginners who come and join uh the basic would be they must be able to swim at least a breaststroke and freestyle for other than that it will be a bonus if they have extra they learn extra outside gymnastics ballet dance but not necessary and then from there they will start training I mean, it, it, it ties into one of my questions, which is, um, you know, what sort of training would they expect? So let's say um, one of the kids has said, oh, I really want to do, I've, just, I've seen it on TV, it looks amazing. You know, if they come to you, um, what sort of training would they expect to go through? So, uh, a lot. <laughs> we train by um, a lot physical. We train a lot of sit ups, V pipe, and then swimming stamina minimum maybe two k swimming, and then yeah, sculling. Um, I mean, what what a swimmer needs also, if you could imagine, we have had swimmers, synchronized swimmers that are actually from artistic gymnastic or um, the other gymnastic. Now what happens with them, they might have very, very good flexibility, but their core is not strong enough for a vertical. They're too loose. Yeah. So you need to have both. You need to have the agility, the flexibility of a gymnast, and yet with a strong core of a swimmer. So that's basically what um, artistic swimmer has to have to be able to do the routines actually because yeah, okay. the, you see the, the biggest difference is when you are um, head up your feet are actually treading but when you are leg up you have to point those toes and straighten those knees which is very different from any other swimming um, 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 parts you know like whether it's water polo or swimming because you actually have to point the toes straighten those knees and really have a long extension so that part is more of a uh, gymnast a ballerina bit and yet the core is the swimmer's core and the stamina is the swimmer's stamina because you have to stand so long underwater holding your breath in fact the swimmers do a lot of um underwater uh, uh core training you can you can try with them. I think they can do 250, 300 meters underwater, just run back, run back without even coming up for a breath. I can't even yeah. do <laughs> doing the process is, is yeah. It's quite must be quite intense to 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 be able to to because it's all different components that you really have to put together in into something that looks. As, as smooth and as natural as possible while while yeah. holding your breath and and you know um having to to you know remember the routine you got the music cues to, to go through and you know and and to remain as as musical in, in your movements as, as possible right and as graceful as that you can be um I felt like I've really done any, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we do try and, you know, for fun, we'll try and do, like, see whether we can lift our leg as you're sculling. Then you watch us sink slowly as we go down. <laughs> um, 
So I'm going to take some que couple of questions from our audience. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Um, our first question is from Paul. What is the minimum age uh, that a synchronized swimmer um, can start, basically? Minimum for my site started, one girl started around six, seven years old. So from there, we train for flexibility and build, build up. Yeah, minimum six, but must at least must be able to know how to swim. Yeah, and don't drown. <laughs> because the pool we training is around 20 feet. <laughs> around 20 feet. It would be very helpful, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. we, we, we mentioned that, um, yeah, minimum age, six, if, if possible, um, and to have some sort of swimming skill. Um, or not drown. <laughs> yeah. Sure, no one Um. Okay. Um. What about? I mean, now you have mixed uh, doubles as well as teams. If, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Um. That's a more recent um. Um. Change, if you like. In the last, I'm. I'm not sure if just how many years ago did they did they allow to have mixed doubles and teams? They started six years ago um, in Russia, World Championship, in Kazan. And it was, um, at that time, I think we only had six, six, no, no, we had eight, eight uh, mixed duets. And I think it's, it's quite cute to see the little boys and the little girls swimming, you know? And you'd be surprised, there are some brothers who actually follow the sisters and they can do better than their sisters. And you be and what is really amazing is the boys are usually a stronger swimmer than the girls. Except of course they cannot point their toes as well as the girls. That's about the only thing. And if you were to see World Championship, the top um mixed duet. When they're underwater, when their feet are up, you can't tell which legs are met, which is the male legs and which is the female legs. It's really beautiful. I mean, if you're graceful and you know it, everything is fluid, you won't actually really notice um, as much, right? You, yeah. You'll be caught up in the whole experience and 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 of what's happening. Um, um if you could remember, if you you could imagine like ice skating so that's the way we are going towards yeah ice skating you have men's solo women's solo and of course the duets and the duets in ice skating nobody wants to miss that so that's basically yeah. where artistic swimming is going towards the mixed duet it, it's not in the olympics yet, right? no no um one of the problems of it of us trying to get it into the Olympics is synchronized swimming then got into the Olympics because it is the only women's sports in aquatic. Okay. You see, you know, all this gender um, equality, so on and so forth. The reason that synchronized swimming got into the Olympics, I think it was Seoul Olympics. I can't remember which, which year that was. It's because it's the only uh, female only sports. So, yeah, that's why it's difficult to put in a mixed duet into the Olympics. I can't imagine, like, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, the World Championships have, have the mixed uh, yeah. versions. Um, are there, I mean, are there many boys in, in in Malaysia who are taking it up or okay, then we have one one boy. We used to have like five but they didn't last the whole training thing. Boys being boys, they they'd be like, ah, I don't want to dance, I don't want to dance. So I have one, left one. He lasted two years 
this year will be his second year training together and he's doing really well. <coughs> I think Negeri Sembilan had two. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. And I think Selangor has two. Why do you think that there's less of, of uh, the interest? Do they see it as, you know, primarily it's still the feminine sport or a more feminine uh, sport as opposed to having... The feedback that I have is... Oh, sorry. Yes, the feedback that I have is like, ah, oh, they, they... Very girlish, very... Everyone, everyone there very girlish and they're scared they become like... <laughs> In return, to see, yeah, some, yeah, that's what they, they are afraid of, yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay, I'm currently having some issues with my mic. Um, can you hear me a little better? Mm -hmm. Can, can. Okay. So, um, okay, uh, let me take a couple more questions now before. Where are the training um, locations in, in uh, Penang and... Uh, Penang and KL, I think they're training in uh, Shalam, Pade. And KL is in Cheras Pool. Yeah. Is it, is it a very... I mean, is the scene as, as big as... as uh, you would like to see, or do you feel that there's still more room for growth? Uh, you know, getting more kids involved in, in synchronizing or artistically. We call it synchronizing. I mean, I think Shona has quite a few swimmers. How many swimmers have you got, Shona? Now 26. Hmm. Yeah, 26. And then there's seven baby juniors. Hmm. And I, think, yeah, and I think Selangor has about 30 and I think Wilaya has about maybe 10 to 15. I, I think the biggest challenge is the coaches fighting for pool time. Um, swimming takes up all. Um, in the diving pool, diving takes up all. And the swimmers really need depth to do the, the, the events. So like... Um, Slango, I know they train either late evening or weekends, you know, so because they can't use the normal training pool because of the swimmers. So it's one is pool time and we don't have enough competitions, basically. Yeah. Is, is it still in Sukma? I mean, usually Sukma is, is the, um, you know, the, the stepping stone in which because we we do not have enough states that are doing synchro we need to have six states to do synchro before it is in Sukma. so at the moment we have penang um kl slangor and grismilan so that's the reason we need two more states to come in. If we can get two more states to come in, then um, then hopefully we get to Sukma. Okay. So let's. Um, I mean, uh, what are sort of skills that are expected of artistic students? Shona, yes. <laughs> Ah, okay, for skills, first thing, definitely swimming and also they must love dancing. I feel from, from my experience, they must love dancing. If they don't like dancing, end up, they won't have passion for it and then they won't continue to train and then they will change sport or, yeah. So, swimming, love dancing and coordination, good coordination. And I would say um, to add on to that is the possess of a performer, you know, when you are showing yourself. We Asians tend to be shy. So we have a lot of swimmers who are actually very shy. And that is not making the performance 
um, endearing to the judges at all. So um, the fact that an uh, artistic swimmer has to have that performance, that showmanship to do well. I mean, what would, what would you consider uh, ways to, to bring more interest towards, uh, kids towards artistic swimming, for example? Um, to me, um, art artistic swimming is not as easy as it looks. That's the problem. A lot of people think it's, it's swimming is swimming laps. You do enough laps, you get your times faster, you can go for competitions. Synchronized swimming, you have to do more than laps. And to actually get you to the part of doing um, routines, you already need to have at least a year of training to be able to do a good routine. And I think that's the problem with our kids. A lot of them want to, you know, train a little bit and go for competition. It doesn't work in, in artistic swimming. You have to at least train. I mean, you, and, and I right, Shauna, you need to have at least sure, one year sure. to one be year. able to do a routine. And a lot of our kids now do not want to even wait for six months. What more, one year? A lot of patience, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I mean, I mean, it looks. That's that's part of the the um, beauty of what they see on TV or, you know, whether they're in the audience is that they see it, well, it look, just looks so effortless and it's so smooth and it's, wow, you know, it's amazing. But then they realize, they, they will go there and realize the amount of work it actually takes to look that graceful, to look like everything is so easy, right? It takes so much uh, more than just, um, you know, go and splash around, be it, in, you know, da, 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 da. and it's much more than that, right? There's so much detail that goes into it. Yeah. Um, is my sound better from you yeah, guys? Much better. There is okay. no sound. Yeah. yeah, I need to, you know, I have all these gadgets that I'm still trying to figure them out. So anyway, at least I'm a bit clearer now. Um, so let's take a couple more uh, questions. Um, how often, Paul's asking, how often does a child need to train a week? Maybe, Shona? For my side, minimum five days a week, three hours, three and a half, three hours to three and a half hours a day. Wow. My side. Yeah. If you want to see like really improvement, you want to go for competition within after that one year, then yes, I would encourage five commitment for five days. Yeah, if you come once a week, then it, it definitely won't be enough. Also. I mean, even if you're at a, a novice, like a beginner level, would that be? Yeah, beginner level, um, they come around three, three times a week, three to four times. And as you progress, obviously, um, yeah. that's a lot of training. Um, yeah. You know, even even for swimmers ourselves, we'll be like, mm, okay, that's quite a lot. Um, but it's, I mean, it shows the depth of, of how much is involved in, in yeah. something like this, um, yeah. you know. And like I said, you know, it takes so much work to make things look natural and effortless, right? Um yeah, Kermit, I mean, you know, if, yeah. if you love the sport, uh, if you love what you were doing, then I guess it would feel a little easier to train that amount of, of that. But, I mean, yeah. it also requires, um, from a parent's point of view, the investment they would have to make yeah. in, in also yeah. encouraging and um, being a part, I guess, of, of the child's um goals but, if you but yeah. say, saying that leah just saying that you, you know how much training we really have to do before we can actually represent our state right do you know what i mean we train like um six days a week sometimes seven days a week for years to actually represent our own state 
Whereas for an artistic swimmer to represent the state for a national age group event, for instance, or a Malaysian Open, for instance, they need minimum a year. Yeah. They are already representing the state because you see, they might not be swimming the solos or the duets, but they're needed for the teams. You need eight swimmers for the team. So you might not be, you know, the top two or top three. You just need to be yeah. top eight to represent the state. Whereas yeah. during our time and we were swimming, we need to be basically the top three to actually swim one stroke. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it's like now, but that was what I had to go through. But you know, so um, the ability for the child to represent the state, and then there is so many different competitions now that are actually open. Um, okay, prior to COVID, of course. I mean, you have Indonesia Open, you have um, um, Hong Kong Open, Macau Open, where the team, the state teams, actually go. I mean. How often can you, by the age of 12, represent your state, your country in an international competition? Only in artistic swimming. Yeah, true. So if you look at that on the point of view of mothers and parents, it might take a longer time for the child to be able to swim a routine, but the amount of... Um, uh, Opportunity opportunity and um, the fact that they could actually take part in an international competition, you know, it, it really opens a lot of doors and it gives them lots of chance to really widen their horizon. Okay. And I mean, that's, that would be a different perspective. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You have to look at it from different sides. Um, we have another question from Brennan. Despite it seeming more of an elegant sport, it does seem like there's a fair risk of injury. Um, is that something to think about? Yeah, for as a coach perspective, then the choreography, everything you have to, before you start training, like for example, team, team event, always you see like oh, you're kicking to each other, kick the eyes, kick the head, everything. Then, yeah, but before that, before starting a routine, you must remind the, the girls, boy, that you have to be considerate with each other and take care of each other to reduce and then reduce the risk of injury. Would you, so, I mean, I assume because of the practice you do in your routine, you would do it on land first before um, you, you obviously take it to the water. Um, what are the more common injuries that seem to, I mean, because obviously there's a lot of repetition, there's a lot of um, strain. Um, what are the more common injuries that uh, occur if, if they're not, you know, careful or things that? happen what well, not so serious kicking each other until they get like really big bruise <laughs> yeah okay. or when doing when you troll troll during your troll and then they do flips you will land on someone yeah so it has to do prevention to educate them first like to train on land land drill before entering the water and then train individually on the the flyer before they actually do it together as a team. And I think another thing which um, might not occur in any other aquatic sports is sometimes they forget to breathe. And I really mean they forget to breathe. They would swim the routine too much into the routine. They'll come up, they're supposed to breathe, but they'll just go back in without breathing and it has happened. Yeah. Um, but I think because like you're like so concentrated on everything else, they're like, okay, just, you know, yeah. something as fundamental as breathing, um, yes. Yes. you know, it would be something that, well, you do that, sometimes you do that in workouts or, or training that you, you're so focused on whatever it is you're doing, you actually do hold your breath for longer than you, you necessarily should, right? Because you're so focused on what's happening. Um, I have another question from Lini. 
Any classes for beginner adults? <laughs> we have this thing where we're hoping that, you know, uh, there are masters in, in uh, Fukuoka in 2022, and we're hoping for uh, master's uncles team. That would be really cool. Synchro uncles. I don't know whether it's still on, but at one stage for synchronized swimming, for artistic swimming masters, they actually pay you to join them for world championship. So I don't know whether it still goes on or not. But okay. Um, we should start one. Yeah, we should. Because, yeah. you know, I have so much time in my life. <laughs> and just start <laughs> like everything else. <laughs> um yeah i mean it's a great way to i mean it's like there's um adult uh gymnastics classes you can actually do you know from beginner all the way up they they actually have them i mean it's a great fitness um side of I things belly classes too mm. yeah. so the opportunity i guess is there so shona you know and yeah. penang is a bit far for the rest of us, but in that one, yeah. 2022 would be really cool to have yeah. something like yeah. that. Uh, Lini has a similar question along those lines. You're saying if newbies start <laughs> training now, is it possible to go to the World okay. Championship Masters in 2022? Uh, okay, yeah. the basic, <laughs> the basic step, uh, the basic thing that you need to do is basically lift one leg up one leg up vertical and see if anybody could actually do a vertical up and then do one spin if you can do that within six months i think we can do a choreography don't can't we shana yeah i can <laughs> can yes, i think can, can. i think my yoga yes. teacher will tell you maybe <laughs> not quite that yet but, but you see don't forget you have the water to give you that balancing it's not that you have yeah. to lift up you know like yoga you actually have to lift it against gravity but you have the water to give you that support so i don't know maybe it's easier let me try yeah. you can lead and then yeah because i think i think it's the sculling um yeah that would be the I mean, you do that if you do swim training. It's a, it's one component that you would, you know, like your drills that you would do. Um, because for open water swimming as well, it's it's something that you know usually water treading and you you learn to scull the water, so you can do all that. I mean, obviously not to the same scale as as you would need for um, that. But who knows? We should have more masters representation in the different sports. Right, our different disciplines, I should say, within yes. our own uh, aquatic world. Um, yeah. it's, you know, enough because time, I enough, you know, pool. Like we have nothing, you know, better to do. Nothing. Well, it's fun. <laughs> I'm still Maybe waiting for right. for the uncles. You know, the uncles team. <laughs> you know, It'd be really nice. <laughs> yeah, we'd be like, yeah, represent, you know. They're never going to speak to me again after this. I can tell you that. <laughs> we're like, come, come, come. Um, it'll be, it will be interesting, you know. They will remember Malaysia with uh, <laughs> great interest, you know. Our uncles represent the, the movie, what men, men in swimming or something like yes. that. Yes, that so was about the more. British, yeah. Yeah, they had no training whatsoever, you know? So, yeah, we could. We can have our own version. Hmm. I'll bet in swimming. Try. No, okay. <laughs> I'm going to be in so much trouble after this. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you already. No, no. I saw, I saw in training, in swimming. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be kind of fun. Blame come chain. Yeah. yeah. Choreograph for us. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then the left and my right will be like 
hey, which hand are we going to do right now? <laughs> oh, it's fun to do. I mean, like, as I was saying, you know, we use water polo drills in a lot of water polo drills in our training just to, you know, yeah. give them the depth that they need. And then, you know, let's see if we can get them to do the, the leg thing. Uh, all my swimmers are not going to be very happy with me if I said, okay, now we do some synchro drills as part of training. <laughs> you know, watch them sink <laughs> as they go down. <clears throat> and my, it's good. Water safety is slim too. Yeah. All you need to do is lie flat, right? Put one leg up and just swim with one leg up. Just see how far you can go. It's one of the drills. I would look forward to that one. <laughs> I'm going to be there with the video kit. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> See what happens. Don't <laughs> be like, what? this coach like that one. Um, but, you know, that's that's if you have fun while you're doing it. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. and have a, have a board nearby so they can throw it so they can get up. Um, Brennan is asking, do artistic swimmers like doing kick sets in the pool? <laughs> kick sets. Kicking. Kicking. Oh, they hate our... <laughs> it. They hate yeah, it, the... but we still do. Yes, we still train. We have train to do. Yes. I think for most of our yeah, swimming sports, doing that <laughs> is is <laughs> necessary. Necessary evil. Sometimes like, I always yeah. do a, my leg very pain, you know. <laughs> They flutter, my leg like jelly cannot move already. Some more, just some more. Yeah, but we still have to do. We, we do it. We do this too. That's good. I mean, it's a good. I mean, it's about balance, and it, you know, you you, and you would use that in your propulsion, right? I mean, I'm just throwing terms around like I know what I'm talking about, but you know, when you that ability to that you said flutter kick is something that is a component of synchronized swimming, right? Yeah, basic, basic component. Yeah. So you can't avoid kid sex in any yeah. of our disciplines, Brennan. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we will tell Sue, Sue, Sue Thio, who is also a synchronized swimmer, we'll say she'll have to give us more of the kick yeah. sets in, in our, I'm going to regret that saying that, but um, <laughs> In our workouts, you know, <laughs> okay, more of the, you know, the Superman and the reverse Superman and all those things that you got to do on dry land and be like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I, I have all these great suggestions and then I suffer alongside <laughs> and then do them. <laughs> um, I, know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think we, we, we call it that like, suffer fun. You do it and because you're doing it with people and you're like, okay, we all suffer together. Um, but you see, the, the, I think the biggest difference between um, synchronized swimming and swimming, for instance, yeah, the two main differences is like swimming, you have the major strokes which you need to do. Each one has its own skill set. Right? Now, in artistic swimming, it's, everything's like roja. You have to do everything. Because yeah. I'm looking at it at the point of a judge. Sometimes people ask me, how do you judge? How do you give scores? What do you see? You see? So basically, we judge what we see. So it doesn't really matter whether the legs are fat, thin, um, long, short. It's the difference of the legs to the water. It's like you measure, like for instance, your knee. Your knee will always be your knee, no matter how long, how short your legs are. So if the, knee, the water is at your knee, there's a score for that. You can't run away. So it doesn't really matter um, what the swimmer can do or what can't do, but they have to do everything because they have to show the judges that they can do. So it means if certain things are not there, obviously they can't do it, you see. So yeah. then as a judge, you know already, because we judge at the point of perfection, we start at a 10 for every swimmer that comes out. Then you can see how fast the, the, the scores will then come down. 
So the the point of the only difference I would say with just speed streaming is the coach and the judge must sit down and work things out together. What really looks good, how to show the girls' best performance where. You see, sometimes the placement of the 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 what they're doing is also very important. Then you don't be stuck at the corner of the pool and nobody can see it either. Yeah. I mean, you, you're allowed to use, do you have a restriction in terms of where you can use um, only a certain, like, square it's footage? It's 30 by, 30 by 30, right? 30 by 25, right? Yeah, so basically... So it's the diving pool's equivalent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you could be anywhere. Uh, anywhere. Okay. What, what are the team, I mean... Obviously, there's duet, there's the two, and what's the number for teams? Eight. Eight. Yeah, basically four to eight, because some teams, uh, they don't have enough swimmers, so you could you could go on with the four. So it's not set that, okay, there's only a quartet for this, like, it, it's not one category in its own. It's no. just team, and it's up to the individual uh, country or state to field within that uh, yeah. time frame. Okay. Yeah. But don't forget, you put four in and you put eight in. There's so many things you can do with an eight compared with a four. But, you know, the trying to find the eight, you know, that's the that's the one that um, is the average four. I mean, for the most part, for most countries or it really doesn't. Um, Certain internet uh, FINA rules, um, if you have to put in eight, if you put in less than eight, you have a 0.5 um, penalty, minus oh, 0.5. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So for FINA competitions, it has to be eight. Okay, so not four. Hmm. If, you so can. it's got to be either four or yeah. eight. Yeah. yeah. You, you will not be um, disqualified, but you're going to have 0.5 uh, minus from your total score. For every swimmer that's not swimming. Wow! So if yeah. you had, it would be quite substantial. Yeah. I did not know this. Oh, well, because we just watch and it like looks so nice, and you know, we don't really know the the finer points, I mean, which is why we wanted to talk about that today. Yeah. Um, a, a common question that I know we get asked uh, a fair amount is why do they wear the nose clips? <laughs> Yeah. Because when we are doing upside down, when the legs come up, when we do our verticals, water definitely will go in. So we wear no skip. So that the nose won't go in, won't have water going in. I can't imagine, like, you. I suppose you'd have to get used to wearing it, right? Because it's not yeah. something that feels natural if, if you, you know, having that. I didn't. I've never really worn nose clips, right? When you when because oh. when we, I know some swimmers do wear, especially open water, or they do they do wear nose clips, but mm -hmm. I have never worn them, so I can't imagine what it'd be like actually. And then you also going up and down, and you get, you know, but I suppose with training you get used to it. You I mean you wear it during training? I would assume yeah. as well. Wow. It's one of I mean the how. <laughs> yeah, you know, spray out your nose and um, how would, I mean, how, I mean, I assume there are speakers in the water so you can hear the music uh -huh. at, as, yes. as you um, doing your routine because obviously we only see what's above, right? You know, the whole routine. I mean, even if you have the camera comes down and you can see the underwater shots or anything like that but you don't realize what do they listen to how do they because obviously if they only hear it from above you know everything's going to be muffled while they're while they're sitting in the water right um yeah and i think um that's how even training you need to have underwater speakers so you have one okay. speaker on, on the pool deck and one underwater and of course it has to sink Nothing worse than the underwater speaker running faster than the top. Yeah, we're completely, your whole routine would be yeah. uh, out yeah. of sync, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 
it, it has become such um, uh, what do you call it uh, an uh, an important thing that for big competitions you actually have to prepare your music one on uh, a thumb drive on computer uh, on a disc they don't they don't use this anymore because this tends to jump now and then when this player is hot so they put everything into the computer and the computer will just play so it's a lot easier than i mean i can imagine that if you had sound issues well in in between your routine it, it would completely throw you off right as, as you were because that they, they, they give you your cues tell, yeah i always tell my girls even if halfway through you don't have the music you continue to finish it up finish the whole routine don't stop yeah. i mean it's yeah it's like if you lose your goggles during the race you just have to keep going <laughs> yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, something so, <laughs> some equivalent it's a uh, close it's the closest thing i can think of at the moment how long is a routine um normally folk i mean does it depend on the different age groups obviously if they're much younger would their routines be shorter or is it standard yes. throughout the what are the times Sorry. For under 12, it goes by their age group. So for okay. under 12, solos would be 2 minutes. And then 13 to 15 would be 2 minutes 15 seconds. And then the older juniors would be 2 minutes 30 seconds. So when the older you get, the more longer Time. music you have. Yeah. What about in, in like thinner events? Is that the same uh, 2 minutes yeah. to 30? Mm -hmm. It is the yeah. same. I mean, it would seem like a long... <laughs> two minutes actually when you're doing it right i mean the amount of of work that is hidden behind in, when you're doing it um we have some other questions let's see oh one from finnis malaysia artistic swimmers look amazing in water um are the swimmers and coaches involved in the suit design process and how long does it take to get ready for performance, you know, the hair and the makeup, because it, the overall look is also considered, right, in, 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 in judging as well? Mm -hmm. For swimsuit, if you want your solo suit to be done, you get to design your own and then you send it to the tailor and then they will do it for you. For team, yeah, coach, coach, coaches will design it or seek help by parents or how to design the suit or research on other how other teams their swimsuit like how their design is like so yeah so is it like your normal swimsuit uh and then you add on to it or how, how does yeah. it it's yeah. a custom kind of forcing through itself mm. yes okay because uh, uh, expensive. <laughs> yeah. also, it also depends on the theme sometimes um um, the teams have a theme. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Teams have a theme. So, you know, uh, at one stage, what they were doing a lot of Frozen, for instance, you know? Yeah. So, the, the girls' dream suits are usually um, light blue, you know, with, with sparkles and things like that from, from Frozen and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, it depends on the theme. But usually, usually, we try not to have the swimsuit the same color of the with the water. Yeah. Then you can't really see, you know, where the swimmers are because, like, in all the performances, including the hair, the makeup, and everything, basically, you're trying to impress the judges. You're trying to give them a polished look. And if you have swimsuits that that disappear not, into uh, yeah, because you see, for, for a judge, we are given um, specific scores to give at different parts of your body. For instance, waist level is one score, uh, hips level another score, knee level another score. So you do want to see where that person's uh, uh, waist is, where the person's back is you know and things like that so that's why um swimsuit design is actually very important too 
you might think <laughs> it's a glamour bit of it, but sometimes certain swimsuit can elongate the the body, you know? Yeah. It's creating the lines that you know you, yeah. you want them to be able to see, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean it's the same like in gymnastics, right? You, or rhythmic gymnastics that the costume shouldn't detract or mm. distract from mm. what you're trying to show uh, yeah. in the routine. Yeah. Um, cool. I mean, with that in mind, I mean, um, Brennan was asking, what are some of the, your more memorable uh, or favorite synchro performances that you've seen over the years? I um, mean, definitely as a judge, you've seen, even. you know, plenty. Um, Definitely team events, you know, and and I don't know whether we have videos of um, um, Spain. Spain team has wonderful, really out of this world kind of events where uh, they would maybe portray animals, and you know they'll be coming out, stepping out on people's back, being that animal, yeah, and really, really good. It's amazing that, you know, even the swimmers' backs could be a platform where they jump off. You could even have a trapeze by somebody's feet and you jump off from that person's feet onto somebody's hand and then pass it over, you know, things like that. So these are the it's kind amazing. of... amazing. But then again, this is high risk. One misstep, you're going to hit the swimmer below. It would be, yeah, quite... Uh an impact, right? Yeah. But then, I mean, you know... I can remember China once had this, they made like um, a, a, a donut, uh, yeah? And the swimmer actually came up and did break dancing on, on their backs. Wow. Yeah. You know, things like that. You know, it's amazing. I can't imagine doing that. Yeah. We have enough trouble lifting our leg <laughs> to do that. <laughs> imagine like... <laughs> try, to, try to do that. Not required for masters to do the break dancing across people. Um, just want to say that um, we're probably crazy enough to try things, but no, maybe not. I, I don't think we could even get a stable enough platform for something. <laughs> probably not. We'll be like, you know, can you imagine? Somebody says, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be like, whoops. <laughs> It would be highly entertaining, though. I tell you, that's something that we would uh, be able to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be memorable if you if you're talking about that. Memorable for different reasons, but it would be memorable. You might actually have the whole seven of us thinking and have a lot of this. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. But, you know, do not be afraid as the masters, you know, to <laughs> try it out. Um, Paul is asking whether, um, hang on, let me bring this up. Uh, training in Shalom in Pade. Um, yeah. Not Panasonic, it's in Pade. Uh, I don't know what's Daro uh, Daro Isan, no. Daro Isan, Isan, right? Yeah. What I can do is maybe later on I'll post up a link if if um, of the uh, where you can find out more information and things like that. I'll I'll put, post that in a separate post uh, later today because um, I don't have that obviously information offhand. Um, but I'll I will share that with you um, or whoever else uh, on after the show, maybe. Mm. We can get that out there to you. Um, let me see. I can see that uh, Clara and uh, Linny are asking, you know, about coaches. Um, can we get a coach for Masters? I think they're, we they're can. They're really excited yeah. about this. <laughs> I think we can because we have enough swimmers who are retired swimmers. I mean, I have enough numbers to call. We have enough retired swimmers who, I, I think if we could do it like weekends or when they're off and things like that, I think it would be fun. Yeah. Yeah? When they're off. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Forever. Well, I am no, anyway. We, we yeah. could start. 
I could join you. Oh my god, did I say that? Oh, I could oh, join you. Oh, 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 Cut out that photo, um, sound by and goes, you see, Felina says she will join us in the pool, though we've been asking her to do this for a very, very, very long time. Hey, I did swim in the Masters once. Once. <laughs> every, every year after I said, no, no, I'm working. It's okay. And I'm saying, well, you are a wonderful announcer, I will say. Thank you. But we have the evidence now that you said, you know, you're going to join us if we start doing Singer. leg lifting thing. <laughs> yeah. We'll hold off on the breakdancing across people, I think, for some time yet. Um, <laughs> I don't think our insurance will, will cover <laughs> that side oh of the thing. <laughs> then we'll send a video to Shona and Michelle and be like, what, what was I thinking? <laughs> I'm looking forward to see, to see that to watch that. Yeah. She'll have to like, okay, here's some coaching tips. And... <laughs> yeah. I think there are quite a few um, ex-national swimmers who are in KL. Yeah. Right, Juna. Can bring them together. Mandira, I don't know um, if she's watching this or not. Um, ask her to watch this as well. Yeah. She's in we have Sue. And Irene, who are also ex synchro, oh. um, though yeah. their goal is to, to have our uncles. Oh. That's their goal to have the uncles synchro like team. That... Uncle yeah, uncle man. Synchro. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to come back, <laughs> come back training after really this. We're like, hmm, we're waiting for you to come back. And, um, uh, Clara is asking uh, Felina. Yeah. You really saw a master's <laughs> once. Can you do it again? Where, where was it? Did I swim? I 2017. Swim in... okay. Yeah, I swam in yeah. Boya. I swam in Boya. I, I remember. 50 breasts, 50 back, and 50 free. Yeah. And you can do it again. I had. <laughs> Got time. Never mind. Since you are already coming to the pool to apparently, you know, synchro, <laughs> master synchro, we must, you know, you have to train swimming at the same time, right, Shona? Right? So yeah. you can do and, masters. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that would be really entertaining, actually. Yeah. All of us That's doing fun. synchro. Yeah, it would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's Where is the one. next master's? Um, I think, well, with the situation at the moment, it was originally for December, early December this year. Uh, it was supposed to be in Ipoh. So um, who knows? It'll be kind of cool to have it there. Um, we hope that we get to the swim masters. This year, um, we have no other we have no other races to do at the moment. So uh, maybe they can include masters synchro. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just, just <laughs> and then we will have Shona as our you know, and then she will be like Miss Graceful, and then the, the rest of us can okay, we just follow whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so that would be that would be fun. I mean, having a masters meet in, I mean, world masters in in um and masters championships in different countries will have all the different disciplines, right? I mean, maybe not at the same time, but they do. I mean, they have diving. They have no, we're not taking up diving as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just want to make, <laughs> you know, um, there's water a masters water polo, um and uh, synchro and obviously open water and, and uh, pool swimming as well. So that would be an interesting, you know, to show the depth of our master's world as well. And I think yeah. it'd be kind of fun for the kids to see, I mean, the same thing with master swimming or anything else that, 
there's progression. There's a, a journey that you know you can if it's the sport that you love, the discipline that you love, uh, you can carry it on for as long as you want. I mean, maybe not to the same uh, training scale as as you did if you were a competitive artistic swimmer or a swimmer, but oh. it's still you know, you, you can still do the, the sport that you love doing for as long as you are able, um, you know, the age that, whatever age, I mean, age is not really a factor, except, you know, our recovery is a lot longer than, you know, you would um, ordinarily. But yeah, I mean, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a way to inspire the kids or, or as like, this is not how you do it, <laughs> maybe for our, our future sequel. Um, program, but you know, it's it's something that you can say to the kids. Look, you know, this is when you have fun with it. When when your competitive career is over per se, and and there is still the journey that you can keep going on, um, and doing that. That's my speech for everyone <laughs> today. It's true. I mean, you can you. You can do sport for, you know, if it's something that you love doing. Sometimes you go away for a while, like a lot of us did, and then come back to it, and then you still find that you love doing it. Um, obviously not to the same scale. You, you, you're not going to train or, or as much, well, unless you really want to, um, as you did before, but you still can do something that you love doing. And that's, that's an inspiring thing for, I think, the younger generation, I hope, anyway. And then you have Shona and her TikTok videos, which are really, really cool. Even, even if, <laughs> like, for instance, artistic swimmers, artistic swimmers, they can then also go into judging. And judging is a whole different career. Yeah? And you can judge until you're, what was it, 60? I can't remember what age or so. Is it 62? I can't remember. I mean, as long as you're able and, and still... Right, you can for as long as you as, as you you feel that you want to. Um, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean you adapt. Obviously, you adapt to to what your physical limitations may be as as you age. But you know, hey, why not? Yeah. And now Felina has set <laughs> the bar <laughs> and said, "Yeah, I'm gonna be." <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Okay. Uh, yes, I will. I will. Okay. Now we have it on video and in the live stream, and I'm sure your sister will be like, "Okay, I'm gonna like screenshot that one." Um, yes, it's already recorded. <laughs> you can't get away from it. Okay, let's um, perhaps close out with um. What are what advice would you give to aspiring artistic swimmers? Mm. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, you have to think about that. <laughs> Just like, oh, no. work okay. hard, um, study hard, listen to your coach. You mean things like that? All that put into into perspective um, I always give the swimmers five main tips you know you have different parts of the body that things that you have to remember for instance I always say to them their face they have to smile and look at the judges their shoulders they have to pull it back so that they stand straight their toes must always be pointed. Their knees must always be stretched out and not soft knees. And their whole body must be a full extension from the head right down to the toes. That's all they need to remember while remembering all the rest. But those, those five bits of your body really counts a lot. You know, sometimes you're so busy concentrating, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. You know, you're giving a, a death mask to all the judges. At least smile, you know? Expression, right? You you yeah. have to have 
you don't have to learn the expression yet when you're younger. But smile. Because young swimmers, small swimmers, they're very cute. But then they're so busy counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. You can see that look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You realize we're going, we're going to be like that if we do. <laughs> My sister will be like, uh, satu, dua, one, one, one. It's like, hey, which, my left or your left? And then, um, but yeah, I mean, how you carry yourself and how you, um, with pride, oh, I suppose not with pride, but. I think the difficulty right? is when you train, you, you forget totally to have expression. You cannot put that expression, plaster it on for competition. You actually have to train with the expression. Yeah, it's so difficult to like, okay, competition, come on. You know, you can't, you know? No. Because <laughs> it has to be a part of, it has to be a natural uh, mm. part of, of the whole thing. Because if you, like you said, you train, you're like, okay, I'm like dead serious. And then that day you expect to like smile and the whole thing will happen. It, it would be really well, difficult. Yeah. yeah. Like Auntie Polina's advice to, to my swimmers is take a mirror, <laughs> practice doing your routine in front of a mirror. That that really helped. That really yeah. helped a lot, using a mirror. Because they can't, when you're doing it, you can't see what, unless, yeah. you know, you video or whatever, but like you're saying, having the mirror there, they can see, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. This, or whether it's wrong or right or okay, I realize that I have this, you know, some little core core component that I need to work on, then they see it for themselves as mm. opposed to I'm telling you, but I can't feel, you know, you can't feel uh, what you're doing wrong. I mean, because a lot of time, like the same in swimming, right? If you have a habit that you want to change, the habit actually feels natural to you and then trying to change it un unless someone tells you or shows you, it's mm. it's it's much harder mm. to visualize and and where to change, right? Um, that's where the I guess the mirror, as you were saying, come in. They they mm. have to see it for themselves. They realize, oh, okay, this is what I need to work on, or um, or this is what I'm doing right. So okay, I have to keep doing that part and and so on and so forth. I thought like I really know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when I have two left feet and I can't really dance, but I'm telling you, this is something that you know you have to consider. But um, I know that uh, Fina has been, you know, they share like throwback uh, things, mm. whether uh, of the different disciplines, whether it's the uh, high dives, high dives, and and the synchro routines, and and obviously all the different uh, all the different disciplines. And it's amazing, you know, you see like you're saying, you see. The, the especially the highest level of, of the synchro swimmers are out there and it's amazing what what they can do I mean you can I think that um, the same with any young swimmers watch them not necessarily you you can like instantly follow that um, but that's something to if it inspires you to do better at what you do or it gives you ideas for oh, okay maybe you know I saw what uh, she or he did with like you saying the toes and the you know the whole pose and whatever it is. Oh, okay. What if I did that? H how do I do that? And you know that's something that you can utilize to your advantage. I mean, watch them. Um, yeah. I mean, there's so much. I talk like I. <laughs> I talk like I really know. <laughs> there's so much out there that you could actually copy and do well, but I mm. think the end of the day, you have to work on your core. I think the most important bit in your whole body that you need to is to strengthen your core and your agility. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's an essential part of, of any yeah. sport, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, having a strong core and um, is, is a huge component. Yeah. yeah. Um, more so in, in, you know, synchronized swimming or artistic swimming that how much core work you would really do um, yeah. with that. Yay, more core. <laughs> Strong core. 
Good. Like Sue, so last week, Sue was talking about having a strong core and, and how to work towards that. So, um, yeah, can't get away from all those core exercises and yeah. all those things, even though sometimes we try. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's there. I mean, and like you said, it, it, it's these things give you the basis for long term. Your core is, you know, is what holds you up on a day to day basis. So even if, they like say you re you've retired from competitive, you know, the the way you carry yourself, the way, you know, it it will teach you. Yeah. Um, it's life, you know. How much better and for yourself? It's it's amazing. You know, there are certain exercises that could actually. Um, straighten your back and give you an inch taller. Very, very simple exercises to do with it, these little kids to actually, you know, pull themselves just, and you could just get your the kids to even push up to get one inch taller. But of course, then they have to remember to do that throughout, you see? Because that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something um, they will learn, I guess. It's, it's They'll try it out. They'll, they'll realize that Okay, maybe that's not something that, not yet, or, but yeah, I mean, it's it's an important part. So remember your core, people, yep. and your kick sets. Can't avoid those. No, and your legs. And your legs, yeah. and your arms, and your sculling, <laughs> and your endurance, <laughs> and your breathing. <laughs> And then your musicality and remembering oh, all the different <laughs> everything <clears throat> everything come together to something that is actually a, a beautiful thing to watch. Um, you know, you guys, <clears throat> it's it's like I said, it is the artistic side of our aquatic world, right? Yeah. Look at the, that component. Um, it's amazing to watch. Um, Good. Uh, do we have any more? Brennan did ask if there was such a thing as open water synchro. <laughs> so, salt water gives you extra buoyancy. Uh, the waves will take us away. <laughs> like, floating the belly lid, floating, floating, floating. floating. <laughs> Passing by. Well, Brennan, you know, it, it could be a direction in which you might want to see where it takes you yeah to try it out for yourself i know you swim open water so yeah, yeah. that would that would be an One interesting the uncle thing in uncle, uh, uncle, right? Brennan is, <laughs> is in his 30s dear well you know are you gonna join us brennan brennan is in saroa ah brennan can start an uncle's team in saroa yeah yeah. Get it going, yeah. Brennan, since you're asking about, you know, all the different components. More curtsies. We have swimmers in Sarawak, don't we? Belinda. Don't we and have tons, tons. in Sarawak? Do we have? No. Last I heard, no. No? No. no. We should because start most of them are in KL, right? Vic, Vic is in <clears> KL. Yeah. yeah. I'll move to KL. Uh, okay. Then. Never mind, Brennan. Start a movement. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. the the uncles going. Ken. Can. Can. Break dance It'll be. Yeah, exactly. Dance and water. <laughs> then, you know, it's your chance to meet the young ladies, huh. the, the ones that are legal. I'm just gonna point that out first. <laughs> Just in case um, we get in trouble. Uh, so, yeah. Mas cover. Anything misconception? And my masters will all be of a certain age, so that's fine. Actually, if they start one in Sarawak and maybe Clara starts one in Para, we'll have six. Yeah. And we can easily go for Sukma. Yeah. Right? That would be kind of cool. Yeah, Brennan, start something. <laughs> yeah. Since you, you asked. 
you know? So we need two more states to join in and we are already ready for here. Yeah. Opal water break dancing girl. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> good because so I um this is just an idea. You just need three swimmers and one coach to start a team in any way. Because the swimmers can do solo, the swimmers can do a duet with a spare and one coach. That's it. You already have a team. We, because you could have already four events with just a solo and a duet. So there's already four goals for each for each state. That was how I pitched it, you see. So if a state could even have just basically three swimmers and one coach, you already have a chance to get four gold medals. That'd be good. I mean, it'd be good to see the the growth basically. I mean, yeah, Sukma, like yeah. you said, is the stepping stone, and and hopefully, more states will participate so that yeah. the inclusiveness will happen, right? Yeah. So you can imagine you have four states, uh, three swimmers and and a coach. I mean, the, a lot of states say, how much money do they have to spend to get the swimmers trained and to get the swimmers, you know, ready for competition? But if you think about it. You just need three swimmers, one coach, you have four events, you have 12 medals to fight for. That would be, I mean, that's that, that's part of the attraction, right? For, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know very well. States. I mean, you have, think about it, you have hockey. How many for one medal? Everybody got to share. Uh, you know, you have football. How many in a team for one medal? Yeah. So trying to get that together would be, I mean, yeah. a smaller number to work with, right? Then, of course, awesome. once you've got that started, it, it is, then you have to work towards a team. Once you get a team in, you could actually have six, no, you get seven events. Yeah. That would be really good to yeah. see that happening because they say it's very difficult to find eight swimmers which i agree but you can easily find one two or three start small and see mm. how it grows yeah that would be amazing we're gonna um wind it down today um because mm -hmm. i know shona has to leave soon to to torture her a little band of Yes, I've seen you guys train last time. Um, before we end, I just want to say um, thank you to my sponsors, um, Swim Shop to You, Phineas Swimming Malaysia, uh, Real Out Play for uh, supporting us as always. Um, just to let you know that you can get 10% uh, off uh normal price items um and switch up to you if you use the code dugongs of course gotta have dugongs for me um uh just to let you know yeah just right there um so and then i'm just gonna say thank you very much ladies for joining us today um very entertaining as always the two of you and i, I hope um Everyone um, not only enjoyed our um, chat today as well, learned something new um, about synchronized swimming or artistic swimming and will want to find out more um, for themselves or, or the, the, their kids. Um, I will share um, additional information. I'll, I'll get some perhaps from the two of you and then reshare it as a post uh, mm. for those who were interested in finding out where they could do um, Synchronized swimming or learn to train uh, there. Um, Shona is based in Penang, so maybe you can mention how, if the the kids are interested in in Penang, to to start synchronized swimming, uh, what would their step be, or how do they get in touch? You can check out Penang Artistic Swimming Team Facebook or Penang Artistic Swimming Team Instagram, and yeah. 
can okay, I'll share it with with all the other um, and uh, so that you know each state. I say each state. Each state is covered. Uh, um, hopefully, there will be more states um, participating soon. It'll be good. Brennan, remember, it is now your task to to start an uncle's uh, single team. In the <laughs> calling. <laughs> your new calling. Um, yeah. But yes, I, I will share later uh, all of that um, so that you know you can have the information that people would want. But thank you very, very much, ladies. And I hope you had a good time too. And uh, Felina, you and I will have a conversation <laughs> later about <laughs> your, your return to the water. Once a week first, okay? Debut. Okay, we start. Debut. Debut. Mm. And then I will send videos to Shona and then she'll be like, <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, 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 Ken. There will be no live streaming of that, though. I just want to point that out from early on. There will be no live streaming. But there will be live any... streaming of me dying, okay? That's, <laughs> no live streaming of me dying. Oh, awesome. Thank you very yeah. much, ladies. You take care. Have a good yeah. uh, weekend and take care, yeah. everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.